Hey, this is David Siegel with a short video out of many from my Climate Science Masterclass. I want to test the CO2 hypothesis to see if CO2 has any real effect on temperature. So recall from a previous lecture that the greenhouse effect really does prevent nighttime temperatures from being extremely cold on Earth. But if you remember, the first 50 parts per million do most all the work. The next 200 parts per million just add a tiny bit more, and any more CO2 from about 200 parts per million are it's just not driving temperatures. Well, that's the theory. Let's take a simple case and see if it works in the real world. Since most of the greenhouse effect is from water vapor, I want to eliminate the change in water vapor as much as possible and just find a place where CO2 has increased, but water vapor hasn't increased. So the East Antarctic Plateau is the world's driest desert. On this plateau, water vapor is scarce, but still there, and water vapor still does about twice as much of the greenhouse effect work as CO2 does. But if water vapor isn't changing and CO2 is increasing, then we should see a rise in temperature. First, let's check if CO2 really is a well-mixed gas around the globe, and the closest CO2 measurement station to Antarctica is at Cape Grimm in Tasmania. Yes, it looks like we see the same thing here as everywhere else. So we can assume it has increased about 40% since 1950 in Antarctica as well. The Eastern Antarctic Plateau is the driest desert on Earth, yet there is still water vapor in the atmosphere because single water atoms can't freeze at those temperatures and pressures. The stations I have in mind are these three stations because they have the most temperature data. They're at an elevation of about 3,000 meters or 10,000 feet. A group of Japanese researchers has worked with this data and found a few biases in the recording equipment. They're working to uncover what these stations tell us. In 2006, they were all dismantled, and then the new equipment was finally installed in 2010 and 2014. At this altitude, even though it's very dry, water vapor is still responsible for more of the greenhouse effect than CO2 is, probably around two to one. But the key here is that water vapor doesn't change, while CO2 concentration does. The principal researcher sent me this note. I cannot find any warming associated with the increase in greenhouse gas, but I found that warm air intrusion to the interior Antarctica is increasing during the past 30 years. That, of course, would coincide with the decrease in albedo, which has increased the amount of sunshine reaching the surface. So Ant the Antarctic is one place where the greenhouse effect has not increased, despite an increase in CO2. Are there other places where temperatures have been stable for the last 100 years or so? Well, the same is true in the tropics. Why aren't temperatures increasing in the tropics? Here's Pambam, India. Temperatures are more or less stable. If albedo is going down, you'd expect a slight rise over the last 20 years or so, and that's exactly what we see, a slight rise in temperatures. This is Papua New Guinea, no rise in temperatures at all, because the tropics are essentially insensitive to changes in CO2. Seychelles, Mahe Island has data since 1890, and look, you can see about a one degree rise since 1980, and that's from a remote weather station. What's going on here? Well, they moved that weather station to the airport when they built it in 1972, so the weather people could more easily record temperatures near their offices. So the story here is of stable temperatures, followed by the growth of their tourism industry. If you're looking for a hockey stick rise in temperatures, you have to be very selective where you look because most remote weather station series don't show it. In fact, the remote station thermometers in the United States tell the same very sick story. This is the actual thermometer data from the station at Cooperstown, a remote location since 1892. Here's Michigan since 1896. Indiana since 1895, Nevada since 1888.
Arma in the UK, the world's oldest weather station, still operating since about 1850. Bologna, Italy, since 1905. Where are the hockey sticks? To learn about Earth's complex climate system, sign up for my climate class and learn more at climatecurious.com.